Welcome back. On my U.S. cross-country road trip this summer, one of my stops was Santa Fe, New Mexico, heading south from Colorado and making my way back to Alabama. Santa Fe was a perfect overnight stay. It just so happened that there was a city concert on a warm summer's night and all the shops were open. While we were exploring the city and still being COVID safe in July 2021, here's how we fell in love with Santa Fe, New Mexico. Welcome to the Travel with Wendy channel. I love connecting and interviewing small business owners around the globe. I like to share reviews and hit the trails hiking. Thanks for joining me today because it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy. Drive through New Mexico was incredible. Every small town seemed to have Pueblo houses and historical buildings still intact. I felt like I was transported back in time. It always amazes me when architecture and art come together to tell a story. A stop in Taos for lunch led us to an incredible burger bar restaurant, the Burger Stand. I think I might have had the spiciest food I've ever tasted. Who orders a spicy black bean veggie burger with habanero cream in America's Southwest and expect it not to be that spicy. This Yankee girl right here. Deliciously filled with flavor and heat, the onion rings were fantastic too. Definitely recommend this cool hip restaurant and town. When I began researching a stay in Santa Fe, I knew I wanted to stay in a Pueblo type guest house while there. I read a lot of blogs and saw tons of YouTube vlogs on staying in Santa Fe, so choosing Pueblo Bonito B&B was a pretty easy choice. Each room and suite at the inn has their own special name. The B&B location is perfect for walking around Santa Fe, close to downtown area, the restaurants and shops. We thoroughly enjoyed meeting owner Amy Beam. As a guest, you can also order fresh tamales for your arrival. These were super delicious. And we also had a big breakfast buffet. More on that later. Our room was totally authentic and had a history and story all its own. Throughout the B&B, each room and section had a tale to tell. You could spend hours just exploring the grounds. But after we dropped our bags, we made our way downtown to check things out. lover of art and artists, Santa Fe, New Mexico is the town for you. I was blown away by the vast array of art galleries we saw on practically every corner in the city. A large Catholic influence, I noticed a strong connection to St. Francis of Assisi. Having toured Assisi, Italy many times over the years, I couldn't help but smile as I saw different dedications to this saint in gardens, storefronts, homes, churches, all over Santa Fe. If you'd like to know more about Italy and Assisi, check out my Day in Assisi blog on my website, travelwithwendy.net. One local artist, Estella Loretto, has many sculptures around town. In bronze, she's beautifully captured St. Kateri Tecacuitha, the first Native American to be named a saint. Born in 1656 and converted to Catholicism at 19, she is the patroness of ecology and the environment, as well as people in exile and Native Americans. Along with a statue of St. Francis, her sculpture can be found in front of the Cathedral Basilica of Francis of Assisi on Cathedral Place, just a few blocks away from the Santa Fe Plaza, the city square. Another beautiful structure is San Miguel's Church, which was built by the Taixcalan Indians from Mexico in the the early 1600s. The original adobe walls remain just under the stucco exterior. The church's roof was destroyed during the Pueblo Indian Rebellion of 1690. A new roof was constructed in 1694 and a three-tiered tower was erected in 1830. In 1887, a single facade tower was built and the massive stone buttresses were added for support. It is a magnificent structure to see and representative of many adobe style buildings of Santa Fe. 
Next, we made our way down to the Santa Fe Plaza, or City Square, and there was an open-air concert going on. Santa Fe is really cool. We are really like in the downtown city center and these Pueblo buildings are everywhere. Heading to the Palace of Governors building. Although it's closed at night, we get to um, see the outside too. So here we go. After walking the streets of Santa Fe and doing a little bit of window shopping, we started to get a bit hungry. So we stopped in at 315 Restaurant Wine Bar. Open Tuesdays through Saturdays and only from 2 to 8, you'll definitely want to make reservations. The food was spectacular and the wine list extensive. So with full bellies and light purple skies, we headed back to the B&B for a great night's sleep. Morning in Santa Fe at the B&B brought an incredible breakfast and an opportunity to chat with Amy a bit more about her lovely B&B guest house. Don't forget to check out her amazing gift shop where she supports local artisans and crafters. After our goodbyes, we loaded up the car and started making our way to Texas. Just a little sad to leave lovely Santa Fe, but we had miles to go before we slept again. Join me next week as we visit Palo Doro Canyon in Texas. So much adventure in just one journey. Check out my YouTube playlist for the whole adventure. I'm adding new travel info all the time. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. More links are in the description below to help you with your travel planning too. Be sure to visit my website, travelwithwendy.net. And remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy.